The goal of today's video is to go over the Milagro Smart POS platform and show you how easy and quickly it is to get set up. The first step that you want to take is go to uh, milagrocorp.com forward slash free dash trial. Sign up for an account. Once you've got signed up, you'll receive an email notification, complete your sign up process, and within minutes, you will be logged into your own platform. Uh, currently, we've gone ahead and signed up for a platform, and you can see in here that we are now logged in. Give you a quick summary of the platform. This dashboard will update with proper reporting that you need. Uh, you have a calendar that tracks any calendar activities. Your vendor section allows you to keep track of your vendors. Customers is the most important part of the platform where it allows you to keep track of all of your customers, their spend history, and everything related to your clients. You also have a task management that is included in the system for to-do list if you decide to use that. We do have a support ticketing and project management also enabled in the platform. You have an accounting system that allows you to create purchase order, create your chart of account, your bank accounts, items, and categories. You have HR, where you keep track of your employees, departments, uh, any leave management requests, uh, time tracking, attendance report is also tracked there. And then you have your reportings and your utilities for setting up everything, users and locations, uh, policies, permissions. And lastly, you have all of your restaurant-specific items like the smart menus, smart X, smart weight, and smart POS. So clearly, this is your point of sale system. The smart weight is your reservation and waitlist management. Smart X is your customer feedback tool, internal auditing, employee feedback management, anything related to feedback. And your smart menus is what allows your customers to see your entire menu electronically with pictures, reviews, place orders uh, at the location, pay at the table, and etc. As a note, remember that the power of this platform is not any of the modules that it has built in, but it is the data analytics behind the scene and the AI marketing part of the platform. As you are well aware now, we, Milagro automatically builds a profile of every customer who visits a restaurant, their spend history, shopping habits, and it uses that information to effectively and individually market to every single individual rather than mass marketing. So let's go ahead and get started and see how easy it is to set up a brand new location using the smart POS. Once we are signed up, we're here in our uh, platform. The first thing we want to do is review our chart of accounts. Make sure that all the items that are predetermined and predefined for you are exactly what you need. So if you look at the chart of account, there are some uh, predefined chart of accounts that are set for you. If you need to add more, just simply go to new chart of accounts and create your chart of accounts. Once that is done, the next thing you want to do is create your items and categories. We do have a list of predefined categories already built for you as well. You are able to use these existing ones, add new ones, if the ones that you are looking for are not available already in the system. Also in new item category, you are able to create your modifiers, promotion codes, and options as well. So let's define the difference actually between modifiers and options because it's an important differentiator between the two. Your modifiers are your typical modifiers, items that comes on an item. So for example, if I'm ordering a cheeseburger, the cheese on the cheeseburger is a modifier. It's a hamburger plus cheese. My options are single burger, double burger, or triple burger. Those are my options. So if you're here and setting up a hamburger option, you could set up the hamburger, create an option for single, double, or triple, and then add your modifiers on top of it so that the user can add more modifiers or delete the existing modifiers that are on there for the item. We'll go through this example in detail when we get to the point of sale on the tablet. So you just simply select your item, give it an item name, upload a picture, a description, 
add the list of your modifiers and options that you've already created in the system. Uh, give it your item costs, uh, all of the details, and hit create. The first thing you want to do in here is actually create your options and your modifiers first. Because when you do that, then you have a list of all of your available modifiers and all of your available options that you can select. So if I'm selecting these as the options and I hit add, these are the available options for the server when they're using the point of sale. If I go ahead and check that option, then this makes that specific item a default. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these. So now all of these are available when the server tries to order that. But let's say these three items or four items are actually the default. So when they add this specific item, these four are automatically added as the modifier and it shows by the system as default modifiers. So now that we have our item created, we're going to go to utilities. We have already predefined a list of roles for you. For example, district managers, general managers, staff, etc. But you can create your own custom policies here. Within this platform, you're able to create any number of permissions that you want. Just simply go to policies, um, review any existing policies, edit them if you need to, or you could just simply add a new policy and you could drill down within every single system and give specific access, whether view only or you give them full permission to be able to view and edit those policies. So now that we've got our policies out of the way, we'll go to HR, we'll create our departments. Again, that series of predefined departments have already been created for you. But remember, you have your main department and then you also have sub department and then you have department heads as well. If you need to assign somebody as a department head, when you assign someone as the department head, they get full permission to every employee that works under them. So for example, if I click edit here and assign someone as the department head here, I'll be able to select an employee. And now this manager has access to everything that there is about every employee that is in that sub department. So we've got our permissions and departments created. It's now time to add every employee. Just simply go to add a new employee. You'll be able to give them uh, the first name, last name, assign them any payroll categories that you've already created in the system. If an employee has multiple payroll categories, just simply add it in. And when they clock in and clock out, they'll be able to choose which category they're working for that specific day. For example, there may be a driver one day and cashier another day. And you'll assign them their email address, their point of sale password, user ID and password, and assign them to a specific department. Once you assign them to this specific department, they will automatically assume the roles that are assigned to this specific department. Now, let's say this specific assistant manager we're creating here in the system requires one additional permission that no other system manager has permission to. Instead of creating a specific role for that one employee, you just simply add that additional role to that employee. So this makes it a lot easier and it complies with that enterprise user access control system of the platform. So now that the employee is added, we want to go ahead and start creating our location. So we're going to go back to our utilities and go to locations on market. And this is where we generate and create all of our locations and assign them to whatever modules that they are subscribed to. Give the location name, you have to give it a four digit unit number. This is used across the platform, the time zone, uh, generate the address, subscribe that specific location to any module. So this location will have access to those specific modules here. You'll be able to create a, or give the email address for every location. This is where they get the sales summary and email notifications for surveys and anything related to that location. I uh, give the Facebook, Yelp, uh, company phone number, website, and Google page. These three, Facebook, Yelp, and Google, is extremely important. You want to make sure that you provide the review pages for that specific site because it is used by SmartX to redirect positive surveys to leave five-star reviews in those specific areas. 
And then uh, here is where you actually assign the staff that are working at this location. You'll be able to select multiple people. This is everybody who has access to this specific location. So any server, managers, etc., that work at this location. If you assign it to everyone, then everybody in the system that has, uh, that has a user ID password or has a point of sale password can actually log in. Uh, last thing, uh, we'll discuss the menu, we'll create the menu, and then you'll be able to assign the specific menu to this location here. All of the menus that you create will become available here, and you simply hit save. Now, markets are a little bit different. This just simply is a group of locations that you want to tie in as one. So think of it as physical locations or a franchisee group or just simply per price market, anything that you want to categorize this with. It's a very simple, you just simply create the new market, select the locations you want it to be part of that market, and you assign permissions to those. And it's a very quick, easy way to group a series of locations and assign them to a district manager, whereby they have access to all of those locations rather than individually adding them to every location. If you're operating a dining restaurant where you have a floor plan, you can come in here, you could select your location, create your floor plan, uh, add your tables. And when you add your table, it'll ask you for a table number and the capacity of the table because uh, it will be used in order to find out how many people are seated at the table and do table analytics. So once you've created your table, you can go ahead and save it. If you don't use tables and you don't have a layout, then just skip over this step. So the next and last step here is to create your menu. You will just simply go to the menu builder, add a menu, and you'll be able to select your categories. Once you've selected your categories, you can select on items, add your items to the category. You can select as many as you need in here. And this is the layout that you will see when you are at the point of sale using this specific menu or for this location. Once you give it a menu name, you can go ahead and save it and that menu becomes available here. There's a couple of things in here to note. You could create a corporate menu and you could subversion that menu. So for example, if you have a specific location that has the same menu as the corporate office, but they have a specific price for an item, Instead of recreating the entire menu, you just simply import the corporate menu and you come in here and you edit the price for that item and now that price becomes effective for that specific location and you could subversion that menu. There's a very powerful menu builder built in here. So when you change the menu for one specific location and you subversion that, you can still have control to change menu items remove items and change pricing and affect the entire corporate stores and everybody else rather than having to individually adjust the pricing for that. So for example, if I change the $6.99 to $5.99 for this specific location and I change my corporate menu to $10.99, the price for this specific location remains the $5.99 that I've defined but every other location that there's not a custom price defined, it will automatically update to the 1099. And furthermore, if I delete or add an item to this specific menu, then when I make a change to my corporate menu, those additional options are not removed. But if I add a menu or add an item to my corporate menu, that item will automatically be added to all of the sub menus. So this is again very easy to use, but very powerful once you get the concept of that. And again, you could just create as many categories as you need and as many items as you need within the platform. So now that we have actually created our menu, our locations, all of that is done, we're ready to download the app from the Google Play Store and set up our point of sale. Uh, we're gonna go back to our utilities, go to our locations, and we're gonna define a device access code for our location. So if I click here on the device manager, you have your devices for your smart weight and your POS because we're dealing with a POS, we'll go ahead and select that. 
and you can add a new device code in here or you could reuse existing ones if they're not assigned if the device id is assigned already to another device it will not allow you to share that among multiple devices furthermore if you have a tablet that gets lost or employee takes it home or it's stolen you could just simply come in here reset the device access code and it will automatically kick that device offline and that device will no longer be functional and it will be locked out so now we will just simply go to the google play store download the app we will open the app and enter the device access code here and press synchronize so now we have downloaded the app and it has been synchronized we will go ahead and log in using a manager id first and notice if i try to log in using a employee that has um, no permissions a typical employee it says day has not been started that is because the manager has not logged in to start the day so first the manager has to log in once they log in it uh, prompts them to start the day you could do credit card only if this uh, there's no cash drawer attached to this tablet or you could do cash and card we'll just simply go ahead and do cash and card for now and it automatically started the day and it will prompt you to the menu a few things about the menu you can see all of your categories here and you'll be able to just simply swap from one category to another category all of your items and uh, pictures description everything is on here you could search the menu by simply hitting the search option and just search for anything that contains that specific item and it will come up so you don't have to search for specific items for the whole character and hit search it's a real-time search remember that the entire menu is controlled from the cloud so any items that you add remove price changes it will real-time update to all of the tablets that are linked to this menu so now in order to get started and be able to use the platform we'll go into the settings option so we'll just hit the hamburger on the top left go to device info manager only has access to this screen so this shows us the device id shows us all of our credit card readers the whether you're using the pax or the e-dynamo you'll see your receipt printer your two kitchen printers along with your bar printer when you are creating an item on the cloud you actually define where that item needs to print in the kitchen and you get to define multiple printers so if an item needs to print on both kitchen hot and kitchen cold printer you can actually define that there and for example if it's an alcoholic drink it will only print at the bar so if you add one check and you have a hamburger a french fries and you also have an alcohol drink on it the hamburger will print on the hot side the fries could print on a cold side of the kitchen and the drink will print in the bar at the same time the receipt will always print uh, at the receipt terminal that has been defined all of this functionality can also be controlled and edited from the cloud so if you configure an ip address here it will automatically sync to the cloud if you change it from the cloud it will automatically update here as well it is important to note that your PAX readers, your kitchen printers on all of your IP devices are in the same IP range as the actual tablet, otherwise they will not work. If you receive your shipment from Milagro, your wireless access points and your IP range is already pre-configured, pre-defined. You don't have to worry about it. However, if you buy your own tablet and you have your own wireless access points, be aware that they must be all on the same network in order to communicate with each other. So now we'll go through some of the other functionalities of the app. We'll click on the hamburger button and start from the top and we'll start from the transactions. So notice I have no transactions for the day. However, I will go ahead and just extend my search. Anything that is in green, that means the check has closed and it has been completed. Anything that is in yellow is a pending check. Anything that is in red has been voided. So it makes it very easy to visually see the difference between them. So we'll go ahead and tap on a specific transaction. It opens the detail of that transaction. You can see what items have been ordered, any modifiers that were added to the item, etc., along with the total. If we go into a check that is pending, you can see the item that has been ordered. If we need to resend it to the kitchen, we could resend it. 
if we need to go ahead and void it or pay for the item or simply add more items to it, you could just tap on the item and it will take you to that specific check. So this is a very quick summary of the transaction. You also have search option here. You could search by check number. You could also search by customer name or the server name and it's a real time search in here. So if we go ahead and just type in check 362, it will automatically filter down that check. The tablet also keeps track of all of your employee hours. Every time they first log in, it forces them to clock in and choose their position. And if they need to start a break, they could just simply hit on start break. And then when they come back, they click on end break when they log in. All of the times are reported to the cloud, so you could want to report in the cloud. Next thing is how to place orders. So if we are set up in quick service, we just simply hit on quick service and it takes us to the quick service menu. If you have a table service or table layout, you could switch back and forth between the two views. So you can have series of tablets that are in quick service, series of them that are in table service as well. We just simply hit the uh, hamburger button on the top. We'll go to settings and then hit on set as table service. Once it is changed to table service, you can see your table layout and they are all color coded as well. So anything that is in blue, the table is seated. Anything that is in green, it's reserved. Anything that is in red is dirty and the free tables are shown in the golden color. If you tap on a table, for example, this one that is already seated, it will take you to that entire transaction and shows you what that person has ordered. You could add more items to it you could print the bill or you could simply just pay for that transaction. So let's go ahead and start a new transaction. I'm going to go back in, go to my table service. We'll choose a free table. Notice if it was quick service, you just simply wouldn't select the table. We'll go ahead and choose the burger that has an option. For example, this one. So once you tap on the item, it gives you the options. Remember this was like single burger, double burger, triple, etc so if you select an option it will automatically add that to the price if you wanted to add multiple items let's say there was 25 of them just simply click here on the item and you will be able to type in any quantities you could also use the plus or minus sign to increase and decrease quantity and as you do that the price will automatically update if you tap on the picture of the item here it will show you a list of your modifiers so notice this is the default modifier because it's selected by default. If you don't want that, you just simply hit no and you hit on the default modifier. If you wanted something extra, you would just simply tap on extra and then tap the item and it will automatically print that to the kitchen. If I wanted to add tomato sauce, I will just simply add tomato sauce. If you wanted to reset everything back to normal, just hit reset, it'll take you back to the original selection so let's say we're just going to go ahead and add tomato sauce and no soy sauce and then we'll x out and that automatically prints here to the item once the item is added if you want to send a special comment to the kitchen you just simply type in your comment in here and whatever the person wanted uh, they will add in here so once you've added your comment, it will automatically print that comment in the kitchen. If you tap anywhere on the item, it will show you all of your options and modifiers that have been selected and changed from the default. Anything that is a default modifier will not be shown. Now that the item has been added and we know everything, we just hit confirm. As soon as you hit confirm, that order is now sent to the kitchen. So now that the order has been sent to the kitchen, it brings us back to our table view. If you simply just tap on the table, you can go back in and you can see the table that you've ordered for. You can see that it's been sent, how many items, any special notes, modifiers, all of that is there. So if we wanted to go ahead and just print the bill, you just simply tap on print bill. It will print the bill for the customer. Once a customer receives their bill and they're ready to pay, you just simply hit the pay option it will take you to the payment screen and here you could pay with cash credit card uh, if there's any promotional codes a customer can provide you with that uh, if they are a loyalty member or want to join the loyalty program you could do that 
since I'm a manager logged in, I also have access to tax exempt. So if I just simply hit tax exempt, it will remove the taxes. If I wanted to split the payment, I could also split the payment. So if we select on that, we could split by seat or we could split by item. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and add a couple of more items to this chart. This way we will be able to modify the uh, split payment and show the difference better. So now I can just go ahead and hit split by seat. If I just select, let's say, five ways, it will split the check into five separate checks evenly. So everybody will pay the same thing. Let's say that's not what I wanted. I just simply hit undo and it will undo the check. If I'm going to split it by item, I just simply click split by item. I'll choose my item and then I'll be able to split that item individually uh, with each check. So if I want to go ahead and create three checks, now I've got three checks. I've got the two that are split here and I've got my main check and I can pay for them separately. And again, if I want to undo that, I just simply hit undo and it'll take me back to my original screen. So we'll go ahead and split this item and we'll go ahead and pay for it. We'll hit pay now. It'll bring us back in here. So if I want to add a promotion to the specific one, I could still do that. If I want to check for loyalty, I'll just simply type in the phone number for the customer. And if they're not a loyalty member, it will simply say, welcome new user. I can have them join right now, entering their first name and last name and being done with that. Let's say we want to go ahead and skip that and pay cash. I'll hit the cash screen. I'll choose a predefined number or I'll just type in $200 and I hit enter. It'll give me the change due here in the screen and then we'll hit done. As soon as you hit done, it will print the receipt and open the cash drawer because it was a cash payment and it will close out that transaction. So now you can notice that it says this one's paid. Well, now we need to pay the rest of the check. We'll go ahead and just pay the difference as well. I'll just enter a random amount and done. So now the entire check is closed and that table will be marked as dirty. So now the table is in red, it's dirty. After five minutes, it will automatically turn to a free table if you wanted to do it sooner just press and tap on the table and mark it as open and the table immediately becomes available for the next guest so now let's go through uh payouts uh, if you want to if you have any payouts you could just simply enter the reason enter the amount of the payout and it will automatically print in your end of the day report and this is how you could create as many payouts as you need for a given shift uh, usually the manager has access to that payout. And actually one thing I noticed that uh, we do have option to have multiple layouts. So notice here, this is the uh, specific layout that has been selected here. If you click on it and you have multiple layouts, it will allow you to change layouts. So now let's go to uh, shift report. By default, your shift report covers all of the employees and you can filter down per individual employee here shows you your beginning cash balance, your total sales, how much were cash, how much tips, how much credit card, along with how much cash you should have here. If you're a manager in this case, you were, you'll be able to end your day and you'll also be able to adjust tips in here as well. So here we have gone ahead and selected a specific employee. We can see their entire sales history, how much cash sales, credit card sales, etc. Now, when it's individual employees, you will be able to declare your cash tips. So if we click on that, it shows you your credit card sales, tips, cash sales, cash tips, etc. And this specific location has enforced a 12% minimum tip requirement. So this employee has to enter 574.31 because of the cash sales. If you had credit card tips, those numbers will be adjusted and your 12% number may be less because you've had half of this in cash sales so you'll be able to declare according to that requirements you'll be able to adjust this percentage in the back end in the cloud so when you log in to your cloud management you'll be able to adjust that option so we'll go ahead and just hit you could enter at least that much but you could enter more if you wanted as well so we'll go ahead and enter that six hundred dollars now we're at 12.5 percent we're good to go We'll go ahead and exit out. 
Once every employee has uh, declared their tips, etc., you'll be able to also end the day here. This was a quick summary on how to set up the Smart POS by Milagro. It's very easy to set up, as you can see, very easy to use, 100% cloud-based, and it allows you to get full control over your operation and your customers. Again, remember the most important part of this entire point of sale system is the automated way that it captures all of that customer information and builds a profile of every single customer so you know who your customers are, how much money they spend, how often they come in, what coupons they respond to, which ones they don't respond to, their return on investment on every marketing campaign per individual customer. If you want to sign up, again, go to the Milagro website, to the free trial site, and go ahead and sign up. Once you sign up, you'll be up and running in a matter of a couple of hours, very easily and seamlessly as we demonstrated in this video. Thank you for watching, and we will be back soon again.